This video is sponsored by Linode. Anyone can build on Linode, whether you need a development portfolio to land your next job or you're ready to put your app into production, Linode can get you there. For $20 in free hosting credit, click the link below or sign up at linode.com slash traversy. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna build a full stack application using Node Express, MongoDB, and Mongoose. And on the front end, we're just using vanilla JavaScript with a library called Mapbox. So basically, we're gonna have an API that serves locations using GeoJSON data. So GeoJSON is a format for storing geographic points. So in our model, we'll have something like this, a location field with um, type point and coordinates, which will be the latitude and longitude. Uh, we're also going to create a geocoder so that we can add a store. So if we go to this page, we can add just a regular address and it will geocode it and get the uh, latitude and longitude for us. So you can see I have some stores placed here. So it's just a store ID and just a little icon. And then if I go and add a store, let's say 0006 and we'll put this one in, let's say 10. Main Street, Haverhill, Mass. And I don't even need the zip code or anything. It'll geocode it for us. It says store added. Click OK. And now you can see that store is is on our map. All right. So even though the application is pretty simple in terms of functionality, we'll be doing a lot. We'll be dealing with Mongoose, um, Mapbox on the front end. We'll be using the MapQuest API to do our geocoding. We'll be using Postman to basically work with our API until we have a front end. And like I said, the front end is going to be just vanilla JavaScript using the Fetch API. I'm not going to use React or anything like that, even though I do have a React icon up here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, and I just want to mention if you took my Node.js API masterclass course on Udemy, a lot of this stuff we're going to that we're doing in this video, we did in that course. Um, just to let you know, if you, if you took that, uh, we'll be creating custom middleware in Mongoose and implementing our geocoder just like we did in that course. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, guys, we're going to get started. So obviously you need Node.js installed. If you don't have that, you can go to nodejs.org and just download either the long term support or the current version. Uh, just get that set up and then we need to create a database. So I'm using MongoDB Atlas, which is a cloud version of MongoDB. If you want to download it and install it on your machine and use it locally, you can do that as well. But basically, I just signed up for an account and logged in and I'm going to go ahead and build a cluster. I'm going to choose the free tier. and just keep AWS checked as my provider. And then down here, I'll just rename the cluster to, let's say, demo cluster and create. Okay, so that's going to get created. It says between one and three minutes. So my cluster is created. It took about a minute and a half or so. And now if I click on connect, we should see these options here. And when we're ready to plug in Uh, our MongoDB URL, we can click connect to application and just grab this connection string. Okay, so that should be all set. And then you should be downloading Postman if you don't have it uh, or some some way to make HTTP requests to our API. Okay, and I have Postman up and running, as you can see right here. Okay, so let's jump into VS Code and I just have an empty folder called Store Locator API, even though we're doing the front end as well, but most of our attention is on the back end. So I have my terminal open. I'm going to go ahead and npm init dash y. That's going to create a package.json file. And I am expecting that you know at least some Node.js. If you don't, I would suggest stopping this video now and going and watching my Node.js crash course. Okay, so we need to have some uh, dependencies we want to install. So we'll clear that up and we'll do npm install express, which is our web framework, mongoose, which is our object data mapper. So we can create our models and all that. And then we also want dot env, which takes care of our global config variables. And we're also going to install node dash geocoder, which is going to handle the geocoding. Um, and I think that's it. Is that all we need? Well, we're also going to install cores so that we can uh, we can have cross domain support. All right. So we'll go ahead and install those dependencies. And then we just have one more, which is going to be a, a dev dependency, and that's Nodemon. So let's say npm install dash uppercase D Nodemon. And Nodemon, I'm sure most of you guys know what that is. It just allows you to constantly watch your server and not have to keep restarting it. So 
in our package.json, I'm going to add a script here called dev. So this is what we'll be running to run our application on our local machine here. And we're going to run nodemon and then the name of the file, which I'm actually going to call server.js. And I'll go ahead and change this main value to server.js. And then I'm just going to have a regular start script as well for in case we deploy this. And then that's just going to run node server.js. Okay, so we'll save that. That should take care of our package.json. Now let's create our server.js. So this is basically just our entry point. Uh, basically, we want to bring in all of our dependencies. We are going to be using the path module later, which is a, a core Node.js module to deal with file paths. So we are going to bring that in now. Um, and then I'm just going to copy this down a few times. We want to bring in express. Okay, we want to bring in dot env for our global variables. And we want to bring in cores. And we're just cores is, is really simple to enable here. We just need to add one line of middleware. Um, but we also need to load our environment variables. So let's say load environment variables. And to do that, we take our dot env module here and we call our object and we call a config method. And since we're I'm going to be putting our config folder inside of a folder called config, we need to add an object here with a path describing that. Okay, so the path is going to be slash config and then it's going to be a file called config.env. That's where we're going to store all of our global variables. Okay, then we need to just initialize express. So const app equals express. Uh, and then we're going to set our port. Now our port, I want to set to a global variable. So I'm going to go ahead and create that config folder. And inside config, I'm going to create a file called config.env. And we're going to have a few things in here. For now, we're going to have the node environment, which is going to be set to development by default. And then we want the port and I'm going to set that to 5000. If you want to use something different, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so we have those set now to access this right here, this this global variable of port. I can simply say process dot env dot and then the name of the variable. Now, the reason I'm setting it into this variable is because I want to put an or condition, because if that's not found, then I still want to run it on 5000. And if you again, if you want to use a different number, that's fine. And then we just need to call app dot listen and we're going to listen on the port and then just have an arrow function here and we can just do a console log just so we know that we're connected. And in here, I'll put some back ticks and I'm going to say server running in and then I want the mode or, or the or not the mode, but the development environment, the node environment. So process dot env dot node underscore env and we'll say mode on port and then we'll put um, the port variable okay so it should say like server running in development mode on port 5000 so let's save that and let's try to run this with npm run dev and there we go everything is running fine now there's a couple pieces of middleware that we need to put in here so right below where we initialized app Let's add the body parser middleware so that we can actually send data to our API. And that's easy. We just do app dot use and then we pass in express uh, dot Jason because we're going to be sending Jason data and then to enable cores. We just do app dot use and simply call cores with parentheses. All right. Now, as far as our routes go, let's just create a sample route here. We'll say app dot get. And the way we're going to structure these routes, it's going to be um, slash API slash version one slash and then whatever the resource, which in our case is going to be stores. We're only going to have one resource in this API. So if that's called, let's go ahead and put a, a call back here. So request response. And we'll just do a console. Actually, yeah, we'll just do a. Actually, let's, we'll do a response. So res dot send. 
Hello. So let's head over to Postman. You could use your browser for this if you want, but I'm going to use Postman. I'll make this bigger. Uh, so I'm going to make a get request to HTTP localhost port 5000 API version 1 stores and send and I get back hello and you can see it's a 200 response. So everything went okay. Um, now I don't want to have my routes in this file even though technically we only have two routes one is to get stores one is to add a store I still want to make this neat and have a separate routes file and then also have a separate controllers file where we actually have controller methods um, just to do this kind of the right way so let's create a folder called routes and inside routes we're going to have a file called stores.js and we want to be able to use the um, uh, express router here. So we're going to bring in express and say require express and we need to create the router. So let's say const router set that to express dot router like that. Uh, and then we have to export the router in order for this to work. So module dot exports equals router. And then when we want to create our routes, we'll just go ahead and grab this. We'll cut this, put that inside here and just change this app to router. So it'll be router dot get. All right. Now we have to link this to our entry point, our entry file here, our server JS. So let's go ahead and just say routes even though we're only going to have one so we can say app dot use and for the route slash API slash uh, version one slash stores we want to require our routes file which is going to be in dot slash routes slash stores okay Now back in here, since we have the route defined here, this API version one stores, we don't need it here. We just need a slash because we're hitting that exact route. Okay, so if I save that, now you can see that we have no errors down here and we should get the same response. So if I go ahead and send, we get hello back. All right, so we've just moved everything to the routes file. Now I want to take it a step further and create a controllers folder. Okay, so let's create a folder called controllers and technically you don't have to do this in an, in an API so small, but it's nice to just have it structured neatly um, in case you're going to scale it, in case you're going to add more to it. So let's add a, a file in controllers called stores.js. Uh, and then in controllers, we're going to have our functions. Uh, and what I like to do is put kind of a signature here. If you took my node course, you know this. I like to put a description of what this is. So this is going to get all stores and then we'll put the actual route, which is going to end the method, which is going to be a get request to API version one stores. And then I'll put the well, usually I'll put the access I mean, we don't have authentication, so it's always going to be public, but we'll, we'll go ahead and still put it here. So access public now to create a, a controller method. We just we need to export it. So exports dot and then whatever we want to call it. So in this case, get stores and then we set this to a function with request response and next I'm going to use an arrow function. You don't have to use an arrow function uh, and then let's just take what we did here, which is just res send hello and put that in there for now. Okay, so now we want to bring this get stores into our routes here. So up here we'll use a little destructuring and we'll pull out get stores and we'll pull that out from our controller. So it's going to be dot slash uh, controllers. Wait a minute, we need to go outside We're in the routes folder, so we need to go dot dot slash and then into controllers and then stores. Okay, and then when we want to use this route, instead of doing router dot get and all this stuff, we can simply say router dot uh, route. 
and we're talking about just the the root route here just slash and then for a get request okay so when a get request when we when we send a get request to this route right here which pertains to this then we want to run get stores okay so we'll go ahead and save that and we should get the same result we should still get hello okay so what we want to happen now when we hit this route is we want to fetch stores from our database. So there's a few things we need to do. One, we need to bring in our MongoDB URL. So back to Atlas. I'm going to let's see, go to connect and then connect to your application. And I'm going to copy this string right here. And let's go back to our config file. And we're going to call this Mongo underscore URI. and then set that here. Okay? Um and then you're going to have to just replace this with your actual password, which in my case is just Brad T. It's the same as the username. And then I'm also going to change the name of the database from test to I'll change it to store locator or whatever you'd like. Okay, so we'll save that and we need to be able to connect to our database before we can actually fetch anything from it. So there's a few ways you can do this. I like to create a config file. So I'm in the config folder, I'm going to create db.js and in here we're going to bring in mongoose, which is what we're going to use to connect. So we want to require mongoose. And then I like to create a uh, a function called connect db and I'm going to make this an asynchronous function because mongoose returns returns promises and you can either use the dot then syntax or you can use async await I think async await is uh, a little neater so that's what we're going to use here all right so we just want to create a try catch block and in the try we're going to create a variable for our connection And since we're using a sync await, we just need to call await before we call mongoose dot connect. Okay, and then mongoose connect takes in the uh, string this mongo URI. So again, to use any of those config variables, we just do process dot env dot and then whatever we called it. So in this case, uh, mongo URI now. With Mongoose, there's a bunch of options that we have to pass in in order for it not to complain and give us a bunch of warnings. Um, so I'm just going to paste those in. So we have this new use new URL parser, use create index, use find and modify, use unified topology. I, I mean, some of these you probably you probably don't need these actually because we're not doing anything that has to do with that. but just in case you you do an update later or something if you add on to this it's just good to have these options here okay and then after we connect i just want to do a quick console log and i'm going to put some backticks in here and just say mongo db connected and then i'm going to put the um basically the connection string here so we can take that connection variable and then we can say connection dot host Okay, so it'll just let us know that it's connected to that host. And then if something goes wrong, I'm just going to first console error, whatever the problem is, and then I'm going to exit exit out of the app with process.exit and we want it to exit with failure, so we want to pass in a 1. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is just module.exports our function which is connect db. All right, now we have to bring this into our server JS. So let's head over to server.js and bring in that function. So we'll say const connect db and we want to bring that in from our config file, our database config. So slash db and then we just need to call it. So I'm going to call it right here. I'll just put a comment It's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll still put a comment. So connect DB. All right. And now down here, right after it says we're running in development mode, it says MongoDB connected and it gives me my host. Okay, so now that we're connected, we need to create a model for our store. So let's create a new folder called models. 
and inside models we're going to create a new file called store with a capital S that's just convention uh, store JS singular and we need to create a schema so let's say const mongoose we need to bring in mongoose and let's create a schema so we'll call this store schema and we set this to new mongoose dot schema and then this takes in an object of fields so we're going to have a store ID and we're going to set this to have a type of string and it's going to be required so for required we could just say true but We can also make it so that it says a message if it if it's not required and we do that with brackets and then just add in a second value here of whatever the message please add please please ask please add a store ID. All right and we'll say that we want this to be unique so that there can't be two of the same store IDs. We'll go ahead and just set trim to true trim any white space and let's set a max length. of uh, we'll do a max length of 10 I guess and we'll say store ID must be less than 10 characters. All right, so that's the store ID. Now the location field is going to be our geo Jason Jason object. All right, so if we go Uh, I close the tab, but if we just search for mongoose geo Jason, it gives us the format of this. So right here, I'm just going to copy this, this whole location field right here, and I'll just paste that in here. All right, so we have uh, a type value. So type string and then enum just means that the only values that are going to be allowed is what's in here and that's a point. This is going to be a geo Jason point. Okay, we don't need these comments here. Um, and then it's required true. I'm actually going to get rid of that because we could run into some issues with that. And then coordinates. So we have type number. I'm also going to get rid of required to here and I'm going to give it an index. of a 2D sphere. All right. Um, and then we can add other fields as well. So in this location, we can have additional fields such as uh, I'm going to do formatted address. And you could do so say formatted address, which is going to be a string, but you could also do like zip code or whatever you'd like to do because the geocoder that we're using Once we send out the address that we send to the API, we can get back anything we want from that address. We'll get the, the latitude and longitude. We can get the formatted address, which will go here. We can get the zip code, the state, the country, all that stuff. So if you wanted to put more in here, you could. Uh, but I think the formatted address is fine. And then the last thing I want to put under location is just a, a created at, which I usually do all the time. which will just be the current date and time. So the type of field will be date and the default. We're going to set a default value, which will be date dot now, which will put the current date and time. Okay, so we need to export this. So we'll say module dot exports and we need to export this as a model. So we're going to say mongoose dot model. And this model is going to be called store and then we pass in the store schema. All right, so that's the basics of of creating a, a model in Mongoose. Now, one thing I forgot to do is actually add the address as a field. So we're going to say address and give this a type of string. And this is going to be required and I'll explain why I'm doing this in a second. So this is going to be required. True. Let's say please add an address. Okay, so what we enter ultimately in the in the form in the front end for the address 
is going to is going to pertain to this. But we're going to create a piece of middleware that's going to convert that address into this location with the uh, coordinates and all that stuff. That way we don't actually have to enter the the latitude and longitude and stuff um, into the API. We just add the address and then the geocoder will turn it into this location. And then ultimately I'm going to make it so that this doesn't even get saved in the database. Only this does. Okay, if that makes sense, because when we send data to our API, it only allows us to send the fields that are in this model. Like if I send a name, it's not going to work. It's not going to go through because I don't have a name field in my model. So let's go back to our controller. And in our controller here, we want to bring in our model. So let's go up above and let's say const call this store and set that to require our model file, which is dot dot slash. We want to go up one level into models and then into store. Okay, and then down here, Mongoose, like I said, returns a pro the connect method returns a promise. So does everything else. If we use find or create or whatever, it all returns promises. And I like to use a sync await. So I'm going to make this function asynchronous. Okay, and I'll just get rid of this and let's do a try catch. So inside this try, let's go ahead and um, basically this what this is going to do is is get stores from the database which we don't have any at the moment but we can still do this and it will just it'll just give us an empty array so let's say const stores and we can set this to a wait okay because this is going to return a promise we can use the store uh, model that we just brought in which has a method called find which just gets everything in that collection so this will fetch all the stores Now as a response, we're going to go ahead and return res dot status of 200 and we're going to tack on some JSON to that. Okay, so in this JSON method, we want to pass in an object and the way I like to structure my API responses is to set a success value, which in this case would be true. We can also set a count value and count the stores. So that variable we can just count length we can just call length because it's an array um, and then of course the data which is going to be the stores all right so that's a successful response now down here if something goes wrong let's just first of all console error whatever happened and then we'll go ahead and just res dot status and send a 500 error which just means a server error and I'll tack on some JSON to that and we'll just say um, error and then a string of server error. All right, so let's save that. And now if we go to Postman and again, we hit this API. So version API version one slash stores, we get success true count zero data is an empty array. Now success is true, even though we have no data, it's still a successful response There's just nothing in the database. Nothing went wrong. There's just nothing there. Okay, so now what I want to do is create the ability to add a store. So let's go back to uh, our controller here and I'm just going to actually I'll copy this whole thing right here. So we're going to have another route and this is going to be to create a store and it's going to be a post request. Oops, not port post to the same URL, but a different method public. Um, and then here, let's change this to add store as a method. Okay, and then add store. We're going to get rid of this. Everything in the try. Um, and let's say const store. Actually, you know what? First of all, first, what I'll do is just console log the request dot body because that'll show us what actually comes in when we send data. So let's save this. Now, this add store is just it, it's not plugged into our routes yet. So we want to go to our routes and bring in add store. And then down here on this router dot route, we can tack on dot post because it's the same route. It's just a different URL. And we have a different function to run, which is add store. 
So I'll save that. And now if we go back here and I just open up another tab and make this a post request to the same URL, we're still going to slash stores. Uh, and then since we're sending data, we need to add a headers value. So under headers, let's add a content type and the content type is application slash JSON. That's the type of data we're sending. So in the body, we want to send some raw JSON. So we'll put some curly braces here and we need a store ID. Since it's JSON, we need uh, double quotes around the key and the uh, value pair. So we'll do 0001. And let's send address. And we'll send 10 Main Street Haverhill Mass. Okay, so if I send this, it's going to hang right now. See how it's just it's not giving us anything back. But if I go down to the console, you can see what was logged. It's just an, an object with store ID and address because this is what it's doing. It's just logging. We didn't send a response back yet. So I'm just going to cancel this and now let's finish this up. I just wanted to show you that request.body gives us the object that we send in the body. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. And now let's go ahead and just create a variable called store. And we're going to use the create method that Mongoose gives us with our model, which returns a promise. So we have to use a wait. So store dot create. And then we just want to pass in our request dot body, which is what I just showed you this right here. Now we want to send back a response. This will save it to the database. We want to send back a response. So let's say return res dot status. We'll send a, a 200, which means everything's okay. And then in the JSON data, we're going to send again success true. Uh, and then we're going to send for the data this that just the one store that we just added, okay, which is coming from this variable. So this will create it in the database as well as return it to this variable. And then we're sending it as a response. And then in the error, we're just we're doing the same thing we did above. Now, remember how we have in our model, we have the store ID is unique. So that'll give us a specific error if that happens. Actually, I'll go ahead and just I'll show you that after because we are console logging the error. But let's just save this and see what happens. So we'll go back here and we'll send this same thing again and check out what we get back. Success true. And then it gives us what was inserted into the database. That one store It has an ID that gets created automatically with MongoDB. We have a store ID that we added. an address and a created at. Okay, now watch what happens if I try to send this again with the same store ID. So we get back just server error. I want this to be more explanatory though and tell us that, you know, we already have this store ID. So if we look at the console log here because we're console logging this error, it gives us some stuff here. It gives us a name, Mongo error, a code, and then this message here. So what I'm going to do is narrow it down by this code and then send a special response if this code is there, meaning that it's a duplicate field. So let's see, we'll go. Let's go right under the here and just put an if statement. And usually like in my node course and my API masterclass course, we create a custom error handler that that handles all this so that we don't have to do it in every single route. Um, but this is just kind of a quick, quick way to show you how to do this. So let's say error dot code. If that is equal to what is it? Eleven thousand. Then let's return. a res dot status. Now this isn't a 400. I mean, this isn't a 500. It's a 400 because it's a user error. They they tried sending something that shouldn't have been sent, which is a duplicate field. Um, so it's a 400 instead of a 500. And then for the JSON, we'll go ahead and just send an error message. And we'll say this store. already exists. All right. And then if it's not this code and it's still an error, it'll just send server error. So if I save this and I go back and I try to send again, now we get this store already exists. 
Okay, now the issue we have at the moment is in our database and we can actually look in our database in um, Atlas. So if we go here and we go to collections, it shows us what we have in our database and all we have is address 10 Main Street, Haverhill, Mass. And that's not what we want. We want a GeoJSON object. So what I'm going to do here is implement a geocoder. And remember, we installed something called node geocoder. And this supports a, a bunch of different libraries, including Google Maps. I think MapQuest is the easiest to use. So that's what we're going to use. But um, basically, it'll give us like all this stuff, latitude, longitude, country, zip code. We can get all this information just from that one line, that one address that we sent. So we're going to create something called Mongoose Middleware to do that. All right. But first of first, I want to create a little utility that will implement this geocoder. So like I said, we're using MapQuest. So we're going to just search for MapQuest API. And you just want to log in, which if you click sign up. Uh, let's see, I'm going to click log in and let me see if I remember this. Okay, so once you sign up and you log in, you'll be able to create a key. Actually, I think they create one automatically. Um, you can see I have my dev camper here. I have this one, my application that should work. So if I click on that, yeah, this one right here is valid. So just, you know, create a new key and then you want to grab this here, the consumer key, not the secret, the key. And then we'll put this in our global variables inside of our config.env. So in here, let's go ahead and I'm going to say geocoder. And I'm also I'm going to put the provider just because this can be different. There's there's like a hundred different providers you can use. We're using MapQuest and then let's say geocoder um, underscore API underscore key. Please use your own, not mine. And we'll save that. And then what I'm going to do is create a folder called utils. And inside here, we're going to create a file called geocoder.js. So we want to bring in our geocoder. So we're going to say node geocoder. Actually, I think if we look at the GitHub page for this, node uh, geocoder GitHub, it has like the exact. This is it. Yeah, so you can see they're bringing it in and then we set some options, including the provider and then we initialize it and we just need to export it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to copy this. Yeah, and then paste that in and I'm not going to use var. So for options for provider, this is where we can put our global variable for our geocoder provider, which is MapQuest. So we can use uh, process dot env dot geocoder underscore provider. And then let's see, we can get rid of the comments, HTTPS, that's good. Format or null, we'll keep that. Now this here is where our key goes, and our key is in our config file. So process dot env dot uh, geocoder underscore API key. Okay, then we we initialize it here, and then we don't need this. We just need to export it because we're going to be using this in our mongoose middleware. So let's say mon uh, module exports equals geocoder. Okay, so this utility now we can bring into our model. So I'm going to close this up and go into our store JS, our model. And in here we want to bring in our geocoder. So const geocoder equals require dot dot slash utils slash geocoder. 
All right, now to create a piece of mongoose middleware, we simply take the schema. Let's put a comment here. We'll say geocode and create location. So we take our schema, store schema, and we can either call this after before save or after save or pre or post save. We want pre because we want this to run before it actually gets saved in the database because we're actually changing what's going into the database instead of the pure address which is happening now we want to geocode it and save um, basically save the coordinates and stuff like that so we're going to say pre save and then we're going to run a function um, let's say async function and then every piece of middleware gets passed in next Okay, you always have to call next, which will call the next piece of middleware. Um, and then let's create a variable here called loc. Okay, because what I want to do is get the uh, geocoded location from the address. So we're going to await because this geocoder will return a promise. So geocoder and then there's a method called geocode. And then to access the address, this right here, that's passed in when we send the data, we simply just need to say this dot address. All right. Now, what I'll do is just a, a console log of loc and show you what that contains. So this should automatically run when I try to save a new store. Um, but I'm actually going to delete the one I already saved. So in, in Atlas, I can go ahead and delete this. so that there's nothing in the database. Okay, so that got deleted. So I'll go back to Postman. If I try to search for stores, you can see there's nothing there. So I'm going to re-add this one. So send. Okay, so it got saved, but let's go back to our console here and see what this gave us on save. We have the latitude, longitude, city, state code, zip code, street name, country code, provider so it gives us all this stuff just from this little line right here okay all those fields that we can save in our database um, now we need to format it as a point for our location field right so let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's say this dot location meaning this field right here we want to save we want to add into that We want it to be an object with a type, okay? Because remember, up here we have a type, and it has to be point, okay? This this enumerated this this just means that it has to be point. So we want to set that to point, right? And then we want to set a coordinates value here, and this is going to be our longitude and then latitude. And if we look down here in loc, we have this. Lat longitude and latitude. Now, this is actually an array. You can see the bracket right here. Even though there's only one object, it is an array. So we have to say loc and then the first item in the array, which is zero and then longitude. Okay, and then we want loc first item in the array, first and only and then latitude. So that's our coordinates and then anything else we wanted to add. Uh, well, actually, we only have a formatted address, but we could have zip code and all that here as well. But since we have formatted address, let's add that. So that is going to be loc first element in the array dot formatted address. And you can see that right here. So this will go in our database, even though we're not using it in our front end, it'll still be in our database. Okay, now the last thing that we want oh, there's two more things we want to do. One is we don't want to save the address in the database, the actual address field that's typed in. So let's say do not save address. And the way we do that is simply take this dot address and set that to undefined and then it won't get saved into the database. And then the last thing is just call next. Okay, since this is a piece of middleware, we have to call next. Okay, so let's save this and I'm going to once again just delete what's already in the database, which is the one with the address. Okay, because it's been just putting these the straight address in. Let's delete that. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll go back to Postman. We'll send the same exact re uh, request again with this address and see what we get back. So now we get back in our data. We get back this location field type point. We get our coordinates and we have a formatted address. Okay, and notice there's no just there's no regular address field because we set that to undefined before it actually got saved into the database. So this is exactly what we want. Okay, and then I'll add another one here. Let's do 10 Main Street, Lawrence, Mass. So I'm just doing cities around just 10 Main Street for cities around that area. Oops, we need to change the ID because that store already exists. And there we go. So now we have two entries in our database. So really, that's it for our back end. Now, in order for us to to access the front end, we're going to create a static folder in our um, in our node structure. Um, so let's see, we're going to go over here. Let's close all these up. And let's create a folder called public. And then we just need to let Node.js know that that's our static folder. So basically we, we want to be able to put HTML files in there, CSS, front end JavaScript, all that stuff. So in server JS, we're going to set our static folder. So the way we do this is with app.use and in here we want to say express.static and pass in our path dot join and we want to join let's say un double underscore dir name just means the current directory and then public so we're just defining that as our static folder and now in public let's create a file called index.html and let's just add a boilerplate here and we'll say store locator And for now, let's just put an H1 and say, we'll just say hello. All right, so if I save this and I'm just going to restart our server here and go back to the browser and let's go to HTTP local host port 5000 and we get hello. All right, so since that HTML folder is in our public folder, which is our static folder, We can just go to whatever dot HTML. So if we create actually we, we are going to create another HTML file called add dot HTML. And if I just go ahead and say store locator add store and I'll put an H1 in here and say add store, we should be able to go to slash add.html. There we go. Okay, and our API our back end API is still running. If I go to Postman and I make a get request to API version 1 stores, you can see we have two stores with the coordinates with the geojson. Okay, so now we want to just continue on our front end. So we can close up MapQuest, Mongoose, we don't need that. Um, what I am going to do is grab Bootstrap So I'm going to go to uh, I'll just say let's just say bootstrap uh, CDN just so it doesn't look absolutely horrible. And we'll just grab this. Okay, and let's put this in both index and add HTML. So I'll paste that there and we'll paste that here. And I also want font awesome for the, the home page. So I'm just going to search for font awesome 5 CDN. And we'll grab it from here. Cloudflare. Just say copy link tag and throw that in right here. Okay, I'm going to close up at HTML for now because we're going to do the map page first. Now we do need map box. So let's head over to Mapbox. Uh, that's not what I want. Forget the URL. Oh, it's just mapbox.com. All right. So you're going to want to create an account. It's free. So let's sign in here.
Hopefully that's right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm logged in and if we click you'll see right here you can choose for iOS, Android, we want web. So we'll click that and I'm going to use the CDN. You can also use NPM, but I'm just going to grab the CDN which is these two files here which we need to grab and put into our index. So we'll paste those in the head. And now we should be good to use Mapbox. All right, so I just want to give you like a basic example of Mapbox. So if I click next, you can see you have to just initialize your map with your token. Um, and this will go in the JavaScript. So uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's add the HTML first. So in our index HTML, um, let's see, we're going to go down into the body and let's get rid of this. And we're going to just have a class of container. I'm going to use some bootstrap classes. We're going to do MY3, which is margin on the top and bottom. And in here, let's put an H1 with the class of display dash four and let's do text dash center. Um, and we'll just say store locator and under that H1 actually in that H1, let's put the icon. So I'm going to have an I class and this is going to be uh, FAS. So this is font awesome FAS and then FA dash map dash marked and we're also going to add in here margin right for to push the text over a little. Okay, so that should just be an I I tag with this class. Okay, so if we save that and take a look should look like that. Okay, now under the H1 we're going to have a button to go to the ad store page. So let's put in an A tag here with the class of BTN and let's do BTN dash success and margin bottom four. And this is going to go to add dot HTML. And we'll say add store. Okay, and then underneath that we're going to have our map container. So this is going to be a div with the ID of map. Um, and then we need to have a, a width and a height here. So we're just going to put some inline style here. It's what it's, it says to do in the documentation. So we'll say width of 100% of its container. And let's do a height for height. I'll do 500 pixels. And I'm also just going to add a border radius of five pixels. Okay, so that's our map container. And then of course we want to link in our JavaScript front end JavaScript, which we haven't created yet, but I'll go ahead and do that. So let's say script uh, source and I'm going to call it map.js this file. Okay, so inside public, we want to create a folder called JS. Actually, this should be JS slash map.js. And inside there, we're going to create a map.js file. Okay, so let's just make sure that this shows up. The map isn't going to show, but the button and stuff should. You can see that takes us to that page. Um, we do have the map container here, but we have none, none of the JavaScript to generate the map yet. So let's do that. Let's go into map.js, which is a front end JavaScript file. And we need like our token and all that stuff, which is right here. So I'm just going to grab this. Okay, we already have our container. We don't need script tags because this is a separate file. So I'll paste that in. Let's change this to const. Um, and then this just initializes a new map box map. And then there's different styles you can have as well. We're just going to use the default streets version 11. Um, let's see container map. I'm going to set a zoom level. So I'm going to set the zoom to nine. And then I'm going to set my center. So this is a lat latitude longitude center, which I'm going to set to I think it's Haverhill, Massachusetts, which is a city near me. So let's say 71.157895. Um, and then 42.707789. And 
And of course, you can change this to whatever you want. Now, just having this should show the map. So if we go back and reload, There we go. So it should show the map. Now, as far as plotting points, let's go back to the docs here and I'm just going to go to documentation and this right here, Mapbox GLJS and to examples. And then I believe it's uh, add generated icon. Let's see. No. That's similar. All oh, right here, add icon to the map. So basically, I mean, you can use custom images if you want. They're doing that here with map.load image. We're not going to do that. Uh, but what we do need to do is add a layer. So we need to do all this. Basically, it takes in an ID of points. Okay, we're using GeoJSON points. That's what our API is is made up of. And then we have in our data We have an array called features, and that's where we have um, the coordinates of each point. So what I'm going to do first is just hard code a point, and then we'll go ahead and make our fetch request and bring in our data. So I'm going to grab. Let's see. Yeah, let's just grab all this. And, and I have the code, uh, the repository in the description. If you do, if you guys are following along and you want to copy from that, you can. But let's create a function here called load map. And I'm going to paste this stuff in. Okay, so I'm not going to load an image. Let's see, where does this actually end? So that has a callback. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have done this because all I want is the add layer. which ends right here. So let's grab that map dot add layer and I'm just going to copy that and that's going to go in place of load image because we don't need to load a custom image. So right here we'll paste that in. Okay, so we have map dot on load and then a function and then map dot add layer. All right, and then let's see. For our point coordinates, obviously we don't want 0, 0. I'm just going to grab the center coordinate we have, which is Haverhill Mass. And I'm just going to paste that in as this coordinate. So basically you would for all your different locations on your map, you would just have an array of these objects. But we're only going to have one for now. So it has a type of feature and then a geometry object. The type is a point. So it's a geojson point. And then we have the coordinates. Now we can also add a properties. to this uh, let's see properties properties object and we can have like a store ID or a title or whatever you want to have let's just we're just going to have the store ID as kind of the title because it's basically all the same store that's the idea um, and then we can have an icon and we'll use the shop icon you can look in the docs for the for the options for that and then for layout Uh, we're not going to put a, an actual image like they did. We're going to use a sprite. So we want we want some curly braces and then icon dash 15 for the sprite. And you can look those up as well if you want um, for the icon size. I'm going to make it 1.5 and then I'm going to add some other stuff as well. So I want a text field because in addition to just the icon, I want I want it to have the store ID. So we're going to say text field and set that to uh, inside quotes and curly braces store ID, okay, which is going to pertain to this property. Any properties you put up here, you can use down here. And then I'm going to just change the text font. So we can actually put in some brackets here and I'm going to use open sans. semi bold and Arial Unicode MS bold so you can set different fonts um, and then I'm going to set an offset for the text or else it's going to be like on top of the icon. So we're going to set that to actually this is going to go into here and it's the X and Y axis. We want to do 0.9 on the Y axis. Uh, and then I just want to text anchor. This will help position it. Um, text anchor is going to be top. 
Okay, so this should give us one point because we have one item in our array. It's static. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll get it from the API. So we just need to call our, our function, what I call it? Load map, because it's all in a function. So we're going to call load map. Okay, so let's see what that does. We'll go back to our app and reload. And there it is, 0001. Okay, so we just manually plotted a point on this map. So what we want to do now is actually fetch it from um, from our API. Okay, because we have these locations here in our database in our API. So we want to plot those instead of just some static coordinates. So what I'll do is create another function. Uh, let's put a comment here. Let's say fetch. stores from API and then this is going to load map with points or with stores. Okay, and the way that I'm going to do this now is instead of hard coding an array, this features right here, see this array where this these brackets are, I'm going to let's comment that out just so we can see the structure of it. and for features instead of having a hard coded array let's pass in a variable called stores whoops not get stores stores because what we're going to do is pass in stores to load map all right so back up here let's create a function called get stores and what we want to do here is use the fetch api to do just that get our store so i'm going to use a sync await so let's say a sync function and we'll say const res equals await and we want to fetch from our api we're on the same domain because we're in the public the static folder so we can just do fetch slash api slash version one slash stores All right, we need to convert it to JSON so we get the data by await res.json that'll give us the JSON data. Okay, and then let's actually just do a console log here of the data. And then instead of calling load map here, I'm going to call get stores. Right now load map isn't even going to get called. So let's just check that out. We'll open up the console here, the front end console. Um, cannot use import statement outside a module. Oh, it did this to me before. I don't know. It just popped this in here for some reason. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so check out what we get. Success true, count to data, and then we have our data, which is a location field. an underscore ID, a store ID, and a created at, and the location has the coordinates. So that's what the data from the database looks like. Uh, now, we need to convert this or map this. We're going to use the map method to turn it into this. Okay, so we need to change the, the structure of the object. So the best way to do that is with the map method. So let's create... Um, Let's see. Yeah, let's create a variable called stores and we'll set that. Now, this data has an object called data in it. So that's what this data dot data is. And then we're going to call dot map, which is a high order array uh, method to loop through. So we'll say for each store and then we're going to call a function and we want to return a new array, a new structured array. Um, array with new structured objects which are going to have a type of feature actually I can just um, I can just copy this so this object here just grab that and just get rid of the just uncomment so we're going to return that and then geometry point uh, and then the coordinates are going to be dynamic right we need the We need the um, latitude and longitude. Now, if we look at the return data, you can see we have coordinates, which is an array with 0, 1. Okay, so the way that we can access both of these is simply by doing 
uh, let's say store. So the current iteration or the current store location dot coordinates and we want the zero index that will give us the latitude and then we want the current store location dot coordinates one. Okay, so that'll give us the dynamic coordinates and then for properties, this should also be dynamic, the store ID. So we'll take the current store and just get the store ID. All right, so what we've done is we've taken the data from the database and reconstructed each object in, to look like this, which is what Mapbox needs. And then what we'll do is just call under here, we'll call load map and we'll pass in stores, which is that that um, converted array. And then that will load this and it'll pass in stores as the features and we can get rid of this. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's a little this is a little hard to explain. So let's save that and then let's see if that works. So if I go back and I reload. Now you can see one and two. So these are both stores that are in our database. So it's working. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is we want to be able to add a new store. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go first of all to our add HTML and let's finish up this page. Uh, let's see. So this page isn't too bad. It's just going to be a form. Um, we're going to get rid of this H1 in the body and put in. I can actually I'll just copy what we have in the index. even the script, although we're going to use it. We're going to create a new JavaScript file for this. So it's going to be called add JS. And then up here, let's change this. We'll get rid of the icon in the heading and we'll just say add store. And let's see, we don't need this. We definitely don't need the map. We just want a form. So let's create a form. Um, we're going to give this form an ID of store dash form and let's give it a class of MB dash four. Okay, we don't need an action because we're going to use JavaScript. And inside here we're going to have uh, a class of form group. And let's have a label. We'll say for store ID dash ID. Store ID and then we need an input and this input will have an ID of store ID and a class of form control. All right, so that should be good. And then I'm just going to copy this form group because now we need a store address. We'll change this. Let's actually, yeah, we'll change this and this to store dash address. Okay, and then we just need a um, submit. So let's do a button with the type of submit. And let's add a class of btn btn dash primary. And then let's also have a, a back button, which is going to be a link. So we'll give this a tag a class of BTN BTN whoops, dot BTN dash secondary. And this is going to go to index.html. OK, and we'll just say back. So let's save that. See what it looks like. So if we go to add store, good. Now for the functionality. Remember, we have an ID on the form so we can add a, an event listener to listen for a submit. And then we have an ID on the inputs so we can get that data store address store ID. So let's create a new file in the public JS called add.js. And there's a million ways you could do this. And of course, you could use React or Angular or whatever you'd like. I'm just trying to do it in a very simple way here. So store form. Set this to document dot get element by D store dash form. And then we also want the ID field, which is an ID of store ID. 
change this. And then this is store address. Okay, so we have our DOM, uh, everything we want from the DOM. And then we're going to have uh, an event listener on the form. So let's say store form dot add event listener. Oops. And in, in here we're going to listen for a submit. And then we're going to call a function called add store. Okay, so we'll create that function. send post to API to add store. All right, so first thing we want to do, we actually want to pass in our event parameter so that we can prevent the default behavior. So if we call prevent default, that'll stop the actual form from submitting. Okay, and then I just want to make sure that they enter data in the form. So we'll say store ID dot value if that's equal to nothing or store address dot value is equal to nothing, then let's just send an alert and it's kind of a cheap way to do it, but that's fine. We'll just say please fill in fields. Okay, then what we want to do is get our data. So let's call this send body. This is what we're going to send in the body to our API. And that's going to be the store ID, which is going to be the store ID dot value. Okay, so the value of the input text and then the address will be the store ID. I'm sorry, store address dot value. Okay, so that's what we want to send to our API. Now we want to do our fetch. So we want to use a try catch here. And let's do um, we'll create a variable called res for response. We want to await fetch. And speaking of that, we have to make this asynchronous since we're using a sync await here. All right, so we're going to await fetch and we want to make our request to actually we can use quotes slash API slash version one slash stores. But in this case, we're making a post request. So we'll add a second object here, second parameter of an object and set the method to post. And we also want to set headers. We want to set the content type. So content type is going to be application JSON, just like when we used Postman. Okay. And then under the headers, we want our body. Now the body, we're sending that send body object, but we're going to wrap it in JSON dot stringify. And then send body. Okay, now. As far as um, let's see, we want to go. Yeah, so after the res here, as far as the error handling goes, We want to check to see what the response is here if it's a 400 because remember we're sending a 400 if the store is already there. So we'll say if res dot status because it'll give us a status back. If that is 400, then we know uh, the store already exists. So what we'll do is we'll throw an error here. Let's say whoops, we want to say throw error and we'll just say store already exists. Okay, um, and then underneath that. So basically what this will do is it'll throw it so we can catch it here and then I'm just going to alert it. So we'll alert. Um, actually, yeah, we'll just alert the error because this should should be whatever we pass in here. I like Axios better. I don't usually use the fetch API. I usually use Axios because I like the way that error handling is better, but I didn't want to use any extra libraries. All right, so throw the error. So if everything goes okay, then let's just alert. And we'll say that the store uh, has been added or store added. And then let's just redirect. So we'll With vanilla JavaScript, we can use the window object and we can say location dot href 
and we can set this to whatever we want. In this case, we're going to go slash index.html. Okay, so go back to the map. And down here in the catch, let's just return after this. All right, so I think that should work. Looks right to me. I don't know. Let's try it. So add store and let's say 000. Let's try one we already did, which is 02. And we'll say 10 Main Street Amesbury Mass. Submit. Okay, so store already exists. So it doesn't let us do it. Let's change it to 3 and submit. Store added. Okay. Redirects us. And there it is 0003. All right, so our application is complete. We've built a, a back end, a back end API with Express, Mongoose, uh, G, the Node Geocoder with MapQuest. We created some Mongoose middleware so that we could create GeoJSON fields. And then we built a front end that could consume our API using Mapbox to display our GeoJSON fields uh, here after fetching them using the fetch API. Okay, so quite a bit of stuff that we did in this little project. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned a little something. Even if you didn't understand the whole thing, hopefully you learned something that you could use, um, you know, in your future development. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.